Hi, everybody. I'm meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Let's look at the European run tonight uh, because um, it has changed somewhat. Uh, we'll show you here. This the colored lines are the uh, upper air is the upper air part. Uh, this is the jet stream at 18,000 feet. You can see with the, this light blue area here. This is where the upper support is, and we have a, a surface low in southeastern Georgia. The big high enveloped all around. Unfortunately, as I've said a few times, we can only show you uh, what, what is publicly available because the European is uh, privately owned and not government owned. Now, this is the European Saturday evening. It has a deep low east of the Delaware coast. And when you look at um, the other models, and I'm just going to shift over, the low is east of, uh, of the uh, coast, the Delmarva Peninsula and just about due south of Atlantic City. When we go to the GFS for the same time frame, it really isn't that far off. The GFS is a shade west of that position. The Canadian is a shade south. So they are the surface lows with all three models are clustered very close together. I think what the difference is, is that if you look at the structure, this is the structure of the upper low on the GFS. It, it's, it's a little more north-south oriented. And when you look at the Canadian, um, it's a, the actual upper low is a little further, I would say, east-northeast of the GFS position. And when you look at the European, the European's upper low is southwest of those two. Now, it could be a speed issue uh, as we move it along because the European's a little bit slower uh, with regards to getting precip in and getting precip out. But ultimately, this upper low winds up in almost the same spot. So I really think the models are now converging on a very close solution. So the issue is going to be uh, in regards to precip and just how close, uh, you know, how far north is that northern fringe of the snow nothing line going to be? And how far north is the line of uh, a few inches and the line of many inches going to be? And I think right now the European is kind of taking that line right over Long Island and New York City, the line between a few inches and the line of many inches. So uh, this is going to be a really fascinating play out. But it's the same idea. You have this deep trough in the southern stream here, and, and that northern jet is is – just relaxed enough now that the European is lifting that low up um, closer. So when I when I look through the actual six hourly movements, the surface lows on the European were west of the day run uh, by a fair number of miles. Again, we're talking we're not talking about a, a huge shift here, but we got enough of a shift that uh, it puts everything in play again. And you can see this sort of schizophrenic nature that we go through as forecasters. This is not easy stuff, especially when you're playing with a handful of miles. Now, the European also, again, would confirm that for southeasternmost Pennsylvania, probably uh, parts of uh, central southern New Jersey, and then getting down to the Baltimore, Washington, D.C. area and back through Virginia, they're pretty much locked in for uh, at, at, at least a foot, uh, if not a foot and a half before this is all said and done, I sure, wouldn't be surprised to see some 18 plus inch amounts uh, in this area here. Uh, the question is, you know, how far north does the one foot, do the one foot plus snows get? Do they get close to New York City? Do they touch New York City and Long Island? You know, will there be some mixing issues getting involved? I don't want to rule that out. I still think in these situations that when mixing gets involved in the coast, that when the low goes by, uh, you wind up bringing the cold air back in, and they tend to make up the difference on the back side. So the bottom line is that the models seem to be converging uh, on a low that's a little bit further west than prior runs on the European and closer to what the GFS and the Canadian model have been printing out. We will. Uh, I, I really want to see another run for confirmation just to be safe and just to make sure uh, you know, there's still a lot of things that can change here. This is a very dynamic situation. Uh, I think it's very unrealistic to, um, at this point, to ask any forecaster to put down a forecast amount that you you expect to uh, hold them to. Okay, what meteorology is is fluid, 
It's about forecasting change. And then it's also about forecasting how the change is going to change. So uh, have a good day. Uh, during uh, tomorrow, I'll put out a first call map. Uh, I have a few numbers jumping around in the top of my head, but I'll get to see a little bit more when we get to the morning. And uh, we'll just put it out there and see where it goes. The game continues and the journey continues.